Hey guys, uh, welcome to the head office. Uh, my name is Iris. Uh, this is where we have our big property group. Uh, we have our offices here in King's Heath in Birmingham. In fact, we actually have our lettings team in the front room. We have our accounts, we have our uh, marketing team and we spend our time here. And we're actually probably gonna do an office tour at some point as well. Um, now, a few weeks ago, we've actually released a video where we've kind of showcased how we converted a three bedroom family house into a luxury six bedroom all on suite HMO. Now, I've had quite a few people uh, reach out to me and say, well, actually, it's all good you guys do these uh, transformations, but how do you actually go about planning it and how do you convert a house from three bedrooms to six bedrooms? What's the planning like? What's the process like? And in fact, it's not a simple process. You have to have um, a, a kind of a vision around and how you want to create. And what's allowed um, me particularly to develop these skills is actually, I've been in property for around uh, just over four years now. My bus business partner, Saj Hussain, is actually running uh, Very Nice Homes, which is a letting agency in Birmingham, which is professionally focused on professional house shares and HMOs. Now that has allowed me to learn and view and see so many HMOs. I've literally been at hundreds of HMOs. I've designed over over 100 rooms over the years and houses how we want to lay them out. Um, and at the same time, while viewing houses to buy or other HMOs or meeting landlords that we potentially, you know, we take on to get that letting team to manage it for them, we've seen a lot of things that we, you know, we didn't quite understand. Why would you do things like, you know, the unfunctional layout? Sometimes the en suites are just overly proportional. Like they're not, they're too big for the bedroom or, you know, the, the communal areas are just not quite sensibly laid out. And just a lot of things, you know, you walk into a house, you've got, you know, bed sockets and the bedside sockets are actually lower than the bedside. So you're thinking, well, there's a lot of planning that could have gone up front to prevent these things. So we've seen quite a lot of, um, like uncommon ways of doing it. And we've put together almost like a guide of how the best way to, to do that. So I think what I wanna share with you here is effectively go through four key stages, how to plan a perfect HMO. So the first thing is gonna be looking at a functional layout, okay? So we're gonna kinda of sit down and kinda of look at how we do that. We're gonna look at design, cause you gotta be thinking about design of, of the room, uh, especially with the themes and the colors and the features when you're doing the plans as well. Then we're gonna look at structure. So it's gonna be effectively seeing you know you need to understand what you can move what you can't move um, and just understanding that the structure side you know what you should be extending or not extending the planning associated with that and also we're gonna look at compliance so when it comes to HMOs we want to look at uh, you know there's a number of things you need to take into account when you're doing your plans at the same time so um, I want to go through that with you as I said we've been in property for quite some time now and HMOs has been something I've been really interested and passionate about and we've been developing them for quite some time and we'll document more projects of the things we've done in the past. Um, now we're on a quite an early Saturday morning. I need a dose of coffee so don't, don't mind I'm just gonna get that now and we'll jump right back at it. So what we're gonna discuss today is actually gonna be relevant for you if you're also looking not just at HMOs because we apply the same principles when it comes to layouts and floor plans in our uh, land developments, when we do new builds, when we're looking at commercial conversions, or even if you're doing just a simple home renovation, you wanna alter things. So it's the key principles we're gonna be applying um, to make sure you create a functional layout. Now, what we also do is, is actually do our plans ourselves. So I know we use architects and most of you will say, well, why don't you actually use architects to do your plans? Um, in short, we do use architects, but when we're appraising plans, um, we like to get the measurements ourselves and work on the initial ideas, the sketches, the layouts, and see if it actually is in line with what we wanna achieve with that specific project. So the key things I use all the time when I'm viewing properties is I just take my notepad, we'll print out the floor plans. I don't, uh, cause the agents don't always give you the floor plans, um, have your pen, pencil, and this little guy. So the digital laser is probably one of the better things I've bought <laughs> over the last few years that actually has really helped me get the measurements. Now, so we use these to take the initial measurements and what we do is then use, there's a few different softwares that you can use to actually map out your plans. Uh, we've been using Floor Planner for the last few years. I've probably done close to 50 projects on that specific software. Um, and it allows really us to kind of just 
uh, plan out the things before we kind of as a set of concepts uh, move the walls from the existing building to see how it kind of works out um, and then once we're happy with the initial thoughts layouts we pass it on to our architects they draw up the, the actual plans uh, based on our initial sketches uh, to prepare for planning applications or building regulations um, drawings and etc so what we'll do is let's jump right into it I'll do the screen share so we can kind of see what I'm actually looking at and what we'll do is we'll look at the three bed property that we convert into six bedroom all on suite HMO as an example and we can kind of see how we've kind of tailored those plans um, to what we've, what we've actually done with them and just let me know in the comments you know what you think uh, what would you have been doing differently with them and let's get right into it so we are now on uh, floorplanner.com I'm not actually going to go into a full tutorial of how to use it. Uh, there's plenty of videos on YouTube explaining you how you can actually use the software, but it's uh, the software that I prefer to use um, where you can actually, as I said, you know, have a lot of functions. Um, you can overlay plans. Uh, that's the only thing I'm going to probably show you here now is actually you can overlay the plans. If you're looking at the screen, uh, you can see you can get your architect drawings, overlay it and plan everything out. So this is very useful when you're kind of looking at the functional spaces. So I'm going to leave this overlay slightly over here for you. If we look at the original plans here, so this is the original plan of the building. So you used to, when you used to walk in, you'd have uh, your living room over here, your reception room, your kitchen, and this used to be um, a out, uh, like a little outbuild disabled toilet. On the first floor, you had a family bathroom, you had bedroom number one, bedroom number two, and bedroom number three. Now, when you're looking at a functional layout, the main things you want to consider is where you're going to have your bedrooms, where you're going to have your kitchen and communal space, and how well can you lay them out. Now, what we always try to do is minimize the hallways. So, for example, this space over here, this is quite a long hallway that's been, it's a wasted space. It's, it's not serving any purpose. So, what we have done actually is we've incorporated this space into the bedroom to form part of an ensuite for it. We've converted this bedroom into, well, this reception room into a bedroom, and we've had to move this wall out slightly over here uh, to accommodate the space. We've moved the ensuite for this bedroom into this space over here, which I'll show you in a minute, and this space became the living room and we've added an extension on the back which incorporated the new kitchen and the new bedroom so as you can see over here if we just uh, increase the size um, this is what happens so when we're looking at functional layout we always want to make sure um, the core things is imagine yourselves being the tenant uh, living there so you want to make sure that uh, all the space is maximized there's no dead spaces in the bedroom um, and you have everything you would need so we built in wardrobes where we can to add additional storage so if you can do it from floor to ceiling that's going to be extra storage so that's very functional uh, we want to try and have the tvs positioned in front of the bed so again that's very functional for the person living there uh, to kind of you know be in the bed and have the tv in front of them the en suites will kind of fit um, but i'll uh, i'll touch on that when we come to the last uh, well to the third point now this here as well you know we've we've uh, we've pushed it out so we have the ensuite here so we're just pinching the space from the original uh, kitchen other points when it comes to functionality we just want to make sure we have spaces for the tenants to sit down uh, have some food work uh, additional storage under bed storage spaces we also want to have bedside lamps bedsides everything needs to be planned out well in advance now let's look at point number two which is design when you're looking at design we always want to make sure that um, you think about it when you're doing the plans themselves because that's going to allow you to decide okay these are the feature walls um, and i'm going to put up some of the photos from uh, properties and projects we've done recently so i'm going to kind of share them with you on the screen now and you can see we uh, have various different features we either use a uh, timber structure um, or we use wallpaper walls for feature walls or we will use um, just painted walls uh, so just like you know um, brighter colors and we decide that on a project by project basis so you kind of need to know uh, the features and the design when you're doing your plans because what we tend to do is we want to position the headboards of the beds on the feature walls if you had the feature wall for example here where i'm showing the plan you really haven't got much space because you've got the ensuite over here you've got this built-in storage and you've got a desk so you really wouldn't have the space for that 
So we want to make sure that, you know, and then the design of the kitchen, the, the living room, so you want to have some seating spaces. Functional, again, we have the TV over here, which is allowing people to sit down over here and watch TV or be by the breakfast bar and watch TV. Um, and yeah, so... It when it comes to the design, what we've also noticed is if you put time and effort into planning your HMO rooms in advance, it means that you have obviously very functional and design-led units, which also attract a premium rent. So I think it's a well worth investment in time to spend in advance and you plan it all out. And what you'll find as well, if you plan your projects in advance, it'll allow you to get better tender for your builders. So it'll allow you to kind of achieve um, more similar quotes from different builders because you'll tell them exactly like, this is the schedule of works. This is the plans we want to achieve. This, these are the feature walls. We want to have them painted in this color or we want to have timbers or whatever material you want to use on the walls to kind of achieve that finish. And then having that all planned out in advance just allows you to get more uh, you're comparing the same the same quote. You're, you're not asking a builder, oh, I want to convert this house from three bedrooms into six bedrooms with six en suites. Six en suites. They could interpret it uh, in, in various ways. You know, you need to know, okay, am I doing the en suite fully tiled, floors to ceilings? Uh, what kind of shower fittings are we using? So that's in the part of the design aspect. You need to kind of look at all those aspects as well. Now let's move on to point number three, which is structural so when we come to structural if we jump back onto the screen you'll see you need to understand as well which walls you can move and which ones you can't and you also need to understand are you doing extensions on the property to add value or are you doing potentially a loft conversion so in this instance we've actually done an extension over here which is uh just over four meters out and we have um about six and a half meters in width now in this particular project we didn't actually go for a loft conversion because there wasn't enough headroom in the loft so you need to look at the project on you know you need to understand the structure of it which walls are low bearing walls and you can physically move uh, which walls you know you can actually open up to create additional doorways so those things you want to look at as well when you're planning out but it's very good for you to understand the building itself when you do that now when we come to the last point which is compliance uh, the things we need to be aware of is effectively the minimum room size requirements um, so depending on which council you are you know you'll have uh, slightly different requirements. It depends if you're doing an HMO or if you're doing a new build development, so you'll have different national minimum space requirements. For example, for HMOs, you need to have at least 6.51 square meters of the bedroom. Now, I wouldn't recommend you do a small bedroom like that uh, because it allows you to, you know, it's not, it's not a desirable room. You wanna really create bedrooms that are 10 square meters and upwards. So for example, from our compliance point of view, you can see that these bedrooms are all over 10 square meters and that's excluding the built-in storage and excluding the bathrooms uh, same thing is actually when we look at the plans on the first floor so if we look at uh, the layout over here uh, you can see that all the bedrooms are over 10 square meters uh, they all have nice good size en suites which range between 2.3 to 2.4 square meters and it's all very functionally laid out so you have the beds in the right locations uh, one thing that i see a lot of people make um, structurally is they, they don't they don't plan out the locations of the radiators so uh, you will often see bedrooms that have radiators behind the headboards which again is not uh, really great because one thing is that the headboards will uh, reduce the heat output for the radiators um, and it's not really great sleeping by a radiator with your head against it and so you want to make sure always you plan out the, the structural side of things when it comes to like again the, the, the layout for the, for the um, radiators so in summary uh, you want to look at four key things when it comes to your plans and that's again it's really rare really when it comes to HMOs but whether you're doing uh, a family home renovation or if you're doing um, a commercial or a, a new build you want to look at the functionality so as I said you always want to minimize the hallway spaces where it's unnecessary uh, maximize the space in the bedrooms as opposed to uh, make sure your bedrooms or en suites are always um, well proportionate and when you're doing the plans just think of the design think of the end user in mind think of what would you like to see if you're actually living there um, and you know things like bedside lamps the correct location of the bedside sockets like the amount of uh, projects i go to and i see people um, underthink the locations of their sockets their switches um, that it becomes very inconvenient. So for example, if you don't think that through in advance, let's say you wanna put a wardrobe and you end up realizing actually there's gonna be a socket hidden behind the wardrobe. You should have really known about that 
from the start. So you want to make sure your sockets are in the right locations. Um, hence, you plan out the location of the furniture in advance. So Floor Planner is a great software for you to help do that because you can move the beds around. So for example, here, if you look at the screen, uh, we can move the beds around. You know, you can see different locations. You can you can really kind of try and work around different options. Um, so, you know, thinking through these things really will help you achieve uh, one, the best trends because your rooms will be desirable. Uh, you'll you, obviously you'll get better refinance figures because you'll be able to um, achieve higher rents and if your valuations are based partially on your income from that particular property as an HMO, um, then you can have better refinance options. And then structurally, as I said, if you know your structure of the building, you'll be able to get better quotes as well with the builders because you'll straight away say, look, I need steels going in here or I want to build this extension of this size, etc. or we're doing a loft and we're going to be putting in one or two bedrooms in there. Um, and then ultimately is the compliance side of things. So you always want to make sure you're adhering to the national minimum uh, sizes. For example, for HMOs, you also have requirements on the communal areas uh, you have uh, requirements on the kitchen so for example you know each tenant would have to be allocated at least 50 centimeters of worktop space which can't be obstructed for example so you wouldn't have a, like your microwave for example on it you might you'll also depending on the amount of occupants you will have in your property well if you're looking at an HMO you need to have uh, say for example one or two sinks one option we'll always prefer to have is one big sink uh, with ideally two bowls in the sink and we also have a dishwasher um, so these things you want to be aware of and make sure you kind of look at the compliance side so look guys i hope you find this kind of information useful um, if you'd like to we can do more content when it comes to a bit more an insight of how with your projects uh, let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future whether you'd like us to do information on like if we go to a property and what we look at when we're doing a viewing, for example, you know, if you want to see that kind of content, uh, let me know so we can kind of outline what we're um, looking for specifically, um, whether that be structural or layouts, or it could be like, you know, what we're looking at, or if you want to see more content around perhaps how we appraise deals, maybe, um, how we do the number stacking or any of that kind of sort of information, just let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of, like, um, and that allow us to kind of create more content that's actually useful and relevant for you. As I said, this video was mainly due to the fact that I had quite a few people reach out to us from the video that I'll put a link over here that we've done the three bedroom to six bedroom conversion. They're like, well, how do you actually create that floor plan? How do you do those changes? So, you know, hopefully this gives you a bit more insight and look, make sure to subscribe to the channel, give it a like, comment any questions you have and share with anyone who you think might be uh, benefiting from this content. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day.